find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail, dog, set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Feed for the taste of the blood. Indie Mayhem Show. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter from Wonderful Pittsburgh, PA, in the Mayhem Studios. Ready to talk independent pro wrestling because we love it. We work in it. I do videography in it with our friends at IWC, RWA, here in the Western PA area over at IndieWrestling.us. Also, he loves it. He's a part of it. He can't get enough of it. He is the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling that resides out of Austin, Texas. He's in Dallas. He is Eamon Payton at Eamon to please on the Twitter. Hello, Sorg. Uh, yeah, I, I, I do love it. I literally just uh, recorded stuff today for something that hopefully you will be seeing uh, uh, soon from Inspire Pro Wrestling that you'll be able to purchase that I know a lot of people uh, have been wanting to purchase for a long time, so keep an eye out for that. Um, but yeah, uh, exciting stuff coming, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm more excited to be talking about indie wrestling with you, Sorg. Certainly, certainly, and we got a great guest today in Connor Claxon, but first, let's, uh, if you guys are into the show, if you want to subscribe to the show, you want to find out more about what we do in the pro wrestling, professional wrestling world, check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com That's the main show, plus our other recaps of plenty of wrestling shows on your television set and other fun things. There's a wrestling game show in there somewhere that we did at one point. That was a lot of fun. You can let us know what you think about pro wrestling, about independent pro wrestling, about the wrestlers we should be talking to and about at 412-206-WMS0. That is the hotline. Leave us a message with your voicey box or at goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Dot com is the email address. Um, and please uh, subscribe to the show, like I said, on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, or the Wrestling Mayhem Show channels on Facebook or um, on Facebook or YouTube uh, for video versions of the show. Eamon, I'm excited for this week's guest. He carries a big wrench. He is a, a, a very, he's been around with the Vicious Outcast wrestling outfit that we've uh, talked about a lot and also that we have done a lot of work with over at IndieWrestling.us. He is Connor Claxton, and here's my talk with him. All right, guys, we have on the line here uh, a fellow that I got to experience at uh, Vicious Outcast Wrestling and also at the Gathering of the Juggalos this year, Connor Claxton. How are you doing this morning? I'm well. How are you? All right, all right. Now, I understand we're, we're kind of catching fuck? you... Uh, we're kind of like, yeah, the, the gathering experience. Holy shit. I um, think he had everything wait, hold on a second. Um, but, um, sorry, I have a glitch going on here. Let me kick that out. All right. Let's just pretend that didn't happen. Um, yeah, I understand we're catching you mid trip this morning. I, and I, I guess that's, that's, that's the weekend. That's the weekends for you, right? Yep. That's every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, so, uh, first of all, uh, we want to like start off uh, getting to know you a little bit. Um, you know, you're into this uh, uh, pro wrestling. Um, what's kind of your earliest memory of pro wrestling? What was kind of the like, the thing that either got you into it, or just your earliest memory of it? Um, the earliest memory I have of wrestling was turning on wrestling for the first time, and the first it was Raw. The first Raw I ever saw was when Vince McMahon gave Mick Foley the hardcore title. Uh, I was never a huge wrestling fan, so I was always a big Mick Foley fan. Mm-hmm. Lots to do with a lot more wrestlers. Awesome, awesome. And, and how'd you go from that, from deciding you want to actually get in the ring and do this thing? I, I, yeah, I was never really a huge wrestling fan, but I always watched a lot of documentaries, mm-hmm. of, you know, backstage business, and I always thought it was cool. I thought, I always thought it'd be fun for me. And it absolutely was. Awesome. It, it seemed like the right time because especially Mick Foley was kind of the first one they had on television that kind of showed that, you know, the backyard and, and kind of like a little bit of how he got there, right? A little bit. Awesome. Uh, so you're, you're somebody that's associated a lot um, with CZW. Again, I've mostly seen you in, in, in Vicious Outcast Wrestling and, of course, at The Gathering. Um, yeah. And... and uh, it, it, it's so much, and I know you're associated with a lot of the, the deathmatch wrestling that happens there. 
um, as well. But CZW, I, I think most people don't know, is a little bit more than that these days. And I know I've seen you in some really uh, uh, fun matches. I was looking up stuff for this interview. I had a lot of fun matches with CZW. I've had a lot of them. Are you talking about the death matches or the non death matches? <laughs> Either or. I well I think I think there people need to to know that there's more than just the death matches with CZW. I mean, if they give me weapons to hurt someone with, that's great, but I don't need weapons for violence. Certainly. Uh speaking of which, I know you, you really stuck out to me the first time I saw you because you come out with a big wrench. Um can, I do. You, can you tell me the story behind the wrench? Story behind the wrench. Um well, when I was a young student, I was in charge of putting the ring together and cutting the ropes. And because I was the only one who took the initiative, I was the one who ended up being in charge of doing that. And I always had the wrench. And so, I went, so that's when Danny Havoc didn't know my name for a while, so he referred to me as the wrench. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, he knows my name now, but still calls me wrench. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course you are involved with a little, a little bit of the deathmatch wrestling and we've had some really good conversations on here about that with, with some guys like, like Matt Tremont for instance and even uh, G Raver uh, who I think you may have seen in VOW as well uh, what is kind of the attraction I to G Raver what's that? I said I know G Raver <laughs> Uh, what is kind of the attraction to doing the deathmatch wrestling for you is it mostly come a stem from that seeing you know growing up seeing uh, uh, Mick Foley I mean it kind of suits me, I'm, I guess, in a way, violent in nature. So the more blood, the more gore, the more weapons, mm-hmm. all the better for me. All right, cool, cool, cool. Um, tell me a little bit about uh, uh, working with uh, Vicious Outcast Wrestling, of course, here uh, in the area. Uh, kind of our, our, our glimpse, we see a lot of CZW guys uh, like you uh, uh, come through for that. Uh, and, of course, they're here south of Pittsburgh or in the West Virginia area as well. I love working at Vicious Outcast Wrestling. That place is so much fun. There's such a great atmosphere there. Uh, I work a lot of fun, great opponents there, too. I mean, a lot of them are pieces of shit, but they're my kind of piece of shit. So, you know, again, I just have a lot of fun there. Get some calls and violence. Mm-hmm. And the crowd there is, as, you know, whatever the crowd is, they always sound a lot larger. Uh, they definitely have some interesting venues down there. I know they're 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 working out. Uh, last I was down there, they were working out of an old theater, uh, for instance. Uh, so they they get around. Oh the yeah, the theater's stuff. fun. I got to jump off a balcony there. <laughs> well, I didn't, I didn't jump off. I got taken off. That's and awesome. To a table. All right. Um, and uh, uh, from that, uh, you so so. I've seen some some pretty interesting things with the online. Uh, what, what's kind of the most vicious uh, death match that you've been involved in? Of course, we see we've seen some crazy stuff lately. With uh, uh, I mean, for a long time, I could easily say "Pains of Glass" with Danny Havoc mm-hmm. at uh, Prelude to Violence 2015. But uh, Masada absolutely is now a contender you know, the first round of TOD this year. I've never been hit with a barbed wire bat before. I've had them rolled on my forehead. I've had them, you know, I've landed on them before, but I've never had someone pick up a barbed wire bat and actually swing and hit me with it. And trust me, I've felt that one for a good while. Not just the barbed wire, but the impact of all that weight. Things fucking heavy. And it's not, for those who don't know, it's not like some kind of fake, non-sharp barbed wire. Like, they're using the real stuff with that, right? Oh, it's, it's very real. Yeah. Not only does all those barbs add, add a certain element to a baseball bat, but all that wire is heavy. So it adds so much weight to the end of that bat. So not only is it covered in real barbed wire that will really cut you, but now the bat is super heavy. Oh. Way more weight behind it. Is that is that the worst object that you, you've been involved with? Um... That's so that's relative because I mean some some things that happen to you they feel like the world just ended while they're happening and then ten minutes later you don't feel them. Mm-hmm. Other things they don't feel like anything while they're happening but you feel it for the next two months. So that's a relative question. I've had that barbed wire bat that that sucked. That felt like the world.
world was ending was happening. And then also I felt that from a, but then I've had other times where like, uh, I slapped my hand in a bunch of thumbtacks and didn't really hurt that bit at the time. But I had like 30 thumbtacks like deep in my hand and I felt that my hand was sort of like a thump. So some of that just sucks. And we're looking at a little bit, if you guys are on the video version, there's a little bit of that action with the barbed wire bat and Masada there. Um, is that a drone? Did they are they are they filming this with a drone? There, is, there was a drone flying over the ring. Yes, <laughs> that's great. That's great. I'd love to take a look at some of that footage. Uh, but that's uh, over with the uh, Combat Zone Wrestling's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, if you want to check out some clips, then of course, please go check out their shows. If you're in, in, not to mention this, he uh, skewered me in that match. Yes, he did. <laughs> Got a lot of those fuckers in there. Wow, um, that's great. Um, so, uh, from there, I, 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 um, uh, just to wrap it up, uh, let me just ask, uh, uh, kind of, what are you watching? Are you, uh, whether recent wrestling, past wrestling, anything that, that, that you're kind of looking at for studying or anything that's really caught your attention these days? Oh, well, I watch a lot of Minoru Suzuki. And who is yeah, that? Yeah, he who? really, really beats the shit out of people. Oh, you don't know who Minoru Suzuki is? Uh, for the, for the people that maybe have it in the audience. Can you explain him for, for people that haven't heard of him in the audience? Minoru Suzuki is a, he's a Japanese wrestler. He's in New Japan, a lot of the other companies there. And he's awesome because he fucks people up. He really, really, you can, and he, the way, the looks he puts on his face when he's doing, you can tell this man generally enjoys hurting people. And I fucking love that. So it's, to me, that's incredibly entertaining to watch. Him and a lot of other Japanese workers. I don't really like a lot of American wrestling these days. Mm-hmm. It, it it seems like, uh, and again, like how my introduction to to deathmatch wrestling was watching a little Japanese stuff myself. Um, it, it seems like they take it to a whole different level over there. Oh yeah, yeah, they take it to a wrestling a little different over there from what I can see. I've never been myself. Mm. All right. Well, tell me. Of course, you've been at this for for a bit. Uh, what? And you can take this however you want to. Uh, we get a lot of really interesting a- answers from this question. Uh, what is the best and the worst thing uh, of working with independent wrestling uh, for you so far? The best and worst thing. The best thing is uh, shit. Uh, that's a tough question because there's a lot of things that are fucking awesome. The worst thing of the 10 hour car ride to Indiana, <laughs> Indiana, at Indiana. And the 12-hour car ride to Atlanta and fucking Dayton and Detroit, Canada and all those shitty places. That's the worst part. Drives to drives. Well, that, there's a lot of awesome things. Like, the people are awesome. You know, getting to go to different towns, getting paid to do it. That's fun. Awesome. Uh, where can people find you? Of course, it sounds like you're driving all over the place, including right now as we talk to you on the phone. Uh, what promotions can people look uh, look for you on the card in the near future? You can look for me at GCW, BOW, Tier 1, Hybrid Wrestling. Except where else do I work? <laughs> Dojo Wars. I work at Dojo Wars. Um, I work at a lot of random-ass places. Today you'll see me at a IWA Mid South King of the Death Match. Yeah, that's all I can remember off the top of my head. What? That's fine. Where can I was people at the find? Gathering of the Douglas this past year. That was awesome. Hey, was that your first time at the Gathering? I don't think I've seen you in years past there. That was my first time at the Gathering, and I had a fucking blast. <laughs> Did you have as good a time as Jeff Hardy seemed to have? Okay, I I had a good time. <laughs> I know I'm actually just going to keep my mouth shut on that one. I'm not going to say anything. Okay. Okay. That's no comment. <laughs> Other than that, from what you can say, because I know, I know uh, uh, another friend of the show, Britt Baker, that was her first show, and 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 she had some interesting uh, impressions of that as well. Like what what was um um uh, what was the greatest or craziest thing you might have seen uh, uh, coming in for that show? Oh, uh, I saw a whole lot of boobies that I wanted to see, and a whole lot of boobies that I did want to see. <laughs> <laughs> that was an interesting part of the gathering. That's awesome. That's awesome. You coming back? You hoping to come back? Well, it's in Colorado next year, so I doubt it. But if it's if it's in Ohio again, I can do that. Hell yeah! 
Oh uh, yeah, it'd be great to see you there. It's a, it's a good crew uh, uh, for that stuff over there. Um, and of course, online, where can people find you um, um, to to keep updated in the in the future of uh, where they can find you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Connor Claxton, one word and one N in Connor. Uh, Facebook, same thing, just Connor Claxton. Awesome. Simple. Well, Connor, thank you so much for joining us. Connor Claxon um, with the Vicious Outcast Wrestling Combat really. Zone Wrestling. And and I guess honorary juggalo now. Uh, so at the gathering. I didn't do that far, but I had a blast. <laughs> Go check him out. Definitely uh, uh, worth your while if you see him on the card. And we'll get back to some more indie wrestling and let uh, Connor get back to his road trip. Good luck on your, ro- your drive, man. Indie Mayhem Show. Thank you so thank you so much to Connor Clax. I made the mistake of scheduling things on Saturday morning and realizing most of these people, if they're busy as he may be, um, are in a car on the way to their their show. So uh, <laughs> thank you so much for taking the call uh, while he was in transit, uh, uh, so to speak. Uh, so great great discussion with him and, and looking forward to see him again in Vicious Outcast Wrestling in the future. Uh, Amen. Uh, we, we had a great discussion this week on Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 533, if you're interested in it, uh, about the second segment. So try bump about 20 minutes if you're really interested in it. But uh, we had a discussion about um, the gifts. I've been hashtagging gift slam, for instance. And we're going to pronounce it that way. I'll explain why over on Wrestling Mayhem Show. Um, of course, WWE did some takedown notices of people ta- uh, of gifting um, um, scenes from SummerSlam while the event was going on, and uh, apparently also took down some parody accounts. And this led to some other discussion, including discussion I saw. This is actually how I first discovered it when you were involved with that was about like gifting like independent pro wrestling things. And mm-hmm. and the broader discussion we will leave for what happened on Wrestling Mayhem show. Uh, I have to give a shout out to Nick Iben, who I actually just completed a music video for because I I made a statement of hey. Um, Please make gifts of the work I do because I would love for it to get out there, uh, including uh, IWC, RWA, or anything else that I've worked on. And then Nick Iben, who we did, like I said, we did a music video, had a lot of fun with that here at the beginning of the month. Um, he took a, he made a gif of part of his music video and started sharing that around and tagged me in it. So I really did appreciate, appreciate that. And I will give an extra shout out. Uh, look up Nick Iben. Uh, you make me smile on YouTube. It's a great music video. Uh, we had a lot of fun with. It's a great song too. So, if you're bag or not, give it a shot and give it a thumbs up. Give it a comment, something. But um, but no, I look at it, and I didn't realize a lot of indie res- wrestling companies don't look on it as favorably as as great tools and promotion or or whatever the case may be. Uh, but uh, I I am in the interest of getting the stuff out there. You know, getting the product out there and get it discovered because I feel like it's not in front of enough eyeballs to make a lot of the other things work. You know what I mean? I think I, I'm a big I'm a big proponent of you get to see the stuff and that's what draws you in. And if there's a gift of something and there's an, uh, the, the the logo in the corner for the promotion, I think that's fine, right? Uh, that's kind of my general stance on it, and 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 I understand. Well, I'm getting too big into because I haven't seen the entire conversation with some of these. Maybe you have seen more of it, Eamon. Um, I understand some people's thoughts on why they don't want their stuff to be gift. Hey, you know what I don't want? Other people to take matches that we've recorded and, and, and put the entire thing on YouTube. That's not cool yeah. either, guys. Um, that's definitely not cool uh, when when we're trying to do something with a product over here. And, and, and that's definitely not your content, right? Where if you're in the match or not. Um, but, uh, that's kind of, but gifts, come on, they're gifts. They're, they're, they're small things. They're, they're something that's cool and shareable. And if it involves your product, I think that's only a positive takeaway. Uh, Eamon, uh, what are your thoughts? Well, I, I think to, you, like you mentioned, there's two sides of the argument that, that people feel like, uh, the argument that if you're sharing gifts, there's, you're basically sharing aspects of the show that you're giving away for free. And it's it's the I think there are promoters and promotions that consider it as bad as you know um, uh, you know pirating you know, DVDs, which I think is completely wrong. And you should particularly on an independent level um, uh, uh, when it comes to pirating. Uh, however, um, to me, I think the difference between the people, the promotions in particular that are for it, and the ones that are kind of against it, I think is a lot of it is exposure. 
I think a lot, to me at least, I, the lot of promotions that I see that are against it are promotions that have a big following. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 not all promotions that have a big following, but the ones that I see that are normally against it are ones that have a big following. So I think their mentality is we are big, um, uh, you know, our big business, so to speak, is selling DVDs or MP4s or VODs or whatever. So by you giving that away for free, you're taking a lot of uh, money that we know is going in a certain place, money that we know will most likely come, and you're kind of detracting from it with gifts. And I can see that argument. I look at something like me, for example, at Inspire Pro Wrestling. Like, if you give us, you know, we're 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 doing you know well, I feel in our area, but um, we still want to get known more. We still want to get seen by more people. We still want more people to find out about Inspire Pro Wrestling. So if you share a GIF of something and people and it gets retweeted how many ever many times, that's only good for us. Mm-hmm. You know, more people know about us now. More people see what we do. It's you know, it's the same idea of when you know Inspire Pro Wrestling. What we do, we've been doing it more lately, is releasing free matches of and and not just free matches, but high profile free matches with the hope that they'll be seen by people, you know, with the hope that people will want to check out what we, what we have, what we have to offer. Um, and, and I think that's just where the mentality differs. Um, uh, you know, and, and I, I had a conversation with somebody about this, about uh, uh, a particular match that we just released for free that we were gifting. Uh, it was the uh, Angela Slam Delilah Doom uh, uh, street fight. And I remember mentioning, like, I've seen, and, and we talked about this when it happened. I've seen like five different camera angles of the biggest spot in that match on Instagram. Right. Like right. That, like, that has been shared like crazy. I'm not too worried if somebody gets it. That only raises awareness of, holy crap, what else happened in this match, right? And, and it's cool that we got, like, yeah, we were talking about that. It's like, I, how many angles of this do you have, you know? Yeah. Like, I think it would be cool to take every angle of that, that table spot on the outside those two did and, like, sync them together and put them on the grid, you know? <laughs> like, like I feel like that would be really cool. Turn that into a gif, you know? Um, right. No, yeah, I, I, I think, um, like, and I've been trying to uh, uh, change what people say. Like, I don't know if you have like, the rules and stuff at the beginning of your shows, but the guys have said, uh, no sh- no recording without the express written content, you know, uh, 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 express written consent of uh, whatever promotion in Sorgatron Media. You know, yeah. um, we, we were selling DVDs, blah, 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 blah. And it's just like, and, and I've gotten, I've, I've definitely, RWA has, has the right wording down when they announce it and say, we do encourage the sharing of as many pictures or clips on Twitter and whatever you want to do as far as that go. Just please yeah. no full matches. The guy that sat there and I saw him holding up a phone for, for, the, for almost the entirety of the Matt Hardy match when he was into this promotion that didn't usually get big names like that. It's like, no, 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 no. That's not cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, exactly. Um, I, I, and we don't, I, because Inspire, I don't think we like expressly like state that, but I've had fans before message, because I was one of the social media accounts. I've had fans message us on social media being like, what's, you know, is it okay if we record stuff? And my response is, we are fine with with uh, recording clips, but we're not okay with full matches. Right, and it, right. it's not it's not a, like a laid on law thing. It's like I, I think I even phrase it as we appreciate it if you don't post full matches, specifically because we're selling DVDs. Right, right. Uh, you, you, and, and, and right. people seem to be understanding about that. Right, it's you know a, I mean? it's a business, and 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 if they're fans of you, they want to see you grow and and be a business. And if that thing they do helps people more people discover you. I think that's very important. Now, one thing right. in, in the one conversation, um, it, it, it talked about, well, some indie promotions are putting their stuff on YouTube for free and monetizing that. So it takes away from that. Does it? Does it? I don't think that's... I mean, I, I don't think, I don't think that's a one-to-one comparison. I think, I think it's a nice argument. I think it's a nice counterpoint, but that is also saying, um, you know, we found out a show that we did ended up on a message board and have it downloaded 600 times. Um, we're certainly not, we just certainly didn't sell 600 copies of that show, but I think it's wrong to think, well, that's, that's 600 times $10 maybe for the digital download, right? And like, no, you right. didn't make that. And this is something that I've had a conversation with a lot of people I've worked with in, in, in creating uh, documentaries and, and, and wrestling shows. It's like, listen, um, take it down. 
like like go to YouTube, go to these sites, and we've we've taken down. I can't tell you how many times we've taken down refereeing one hundred and one Montreal theory uh, uh, over over the last couple of years because that's it blatantly posting the entire thing. Yeah, I mean that's the, no, that's that's not cool, right? Um, and we're gonna go through whatever methods and take it down. But uh, you know, but you can't go to there and say, "Well, this got viewed fifteen hundred times." So it's like, yeah, but we didn't. That doesn't mean we lost fifteen hundred sales. If anything, yeah. that means fifteen hundred people. I'm happy fifteen hundred people saw our thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, it'd be nice if they bought it, but maybe some people will like it and buy it. It's kind of an unintentional thing. Um, how many bands um, are giving away music? And then asking for Patreons, basically. We give away a podcast and ask, please support us if you really want this thing to grow, as far as the Wrestling Mayhem show goes, right? Um, right. To varying success, of course. And some bands do the same thing. Or they give away the music. And please, if you really like the music, you'll come pay to buy a ticket to see us or you'll buy our T-shirt, right? Um, like, you change the monetization. I, I, I feel like when you get pirated is an opportunity to gain new fans, there's plenty of assholes that will just never pay for your stuff. Just period. Never pay for your stuff. But if one person watches that show, that documentary, and it's like, well, they got something cool going on here. And, and they never heard of Ren Renegade Wrestling Alliance or, or International Wrestling Cartel. And they start looking it up, and now that's in their mindset. You know, they know who Sorgatron Media is or Joe Dabrowski is off of that. And we left yeah. an impression on that. Maybe that's a customer down the line. You got, I think, I think you always have to think about the long tail, not the dollar today. Right. As a business. That's a lot of my kind of philosophy as far as that goes. I'm not saying you're wrong if you believe if you have a policy as an independent promotion or whatever company. That's fine. It's within your rights. But I think, especially as we discussed with the WWE, I think it's tone deaf to what the community is and how they communicate with this format that is animated gifts. We're talking about gifts. Jeez, yeah. as as a I didn't think you could see do a DMC takedown for a gif. Like mm -hmm. I I mean it makes of course you could. And hey, we're getting very technical here, I know. But, I, and I saw a really I saw a really good tweet. Uh I wish I can remember who it was from, but like this is this is nothing new with wrestling. Like there there are people, you know, the whole like ripping stuff from VHSs and stuff like that, and, and sharing that that way, people thought that was going to kill the business, and 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 that people weren't going to be able to profit because of that. This is just a new, you know, it's a new animal, obviously, but it's you know, it's it's the same mentality almost in a way. Um, uh, I'd like to think hopefully people are growing though as a, as a as you know as a business as 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 you know a company realizing that hey. It's more than just a dollar at the end of the day, you know what I mean? Right, right. It's a, it's about. Um, um, I've heard the term social equity, right? Uh, yeah. With, with 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 people, and I think that's, I think that's pretty important. Um, um, for, for for, a lot of these promotions, whether you are somebody that's a higher profile one, or if you are ones that are, say, on the levels, the ones that we work with that aren't as prominently known, or not Chikaras or anything like that. You know, um, I think that's definitely. Don't shoot yourself a foot in the foot if, if fans want to share the awesomeness of your promotion in an appropriate mm -hmm. way is is kind of my stance on that, you know, because then 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 like your fans either get turned off by that or great. There's this awesome thing that happens over here that nobody finds out about and that nobody wins. You go away because yeah. you're not making enough money and the fan loses you. Uh, uh, you know, or the fan goes away because they're turned off by your attitude towards the thing. So, mm -hmm. I think, think it's very interesting. Well, you know, an event that's very gifable that uh, <laughs> we were currently in production. I'm, I'm uh, uh, attempting to finish the edit here as we're we're uh, uh, you know recording. I think I have about a, a match and a half left uh, before I do all the bells and whistles on it. Uh, and we talked about kind of what that process has been changed on the last episode, and now we're doing a lot of post editing uh, uh, again. But um, uh, Cage Fury, 2016 IWC International Wrestling Cartel, my first time back to an IWC show personally since April. 
<laughs> April, it is now August. So, yeah, I have experienced a lot of them, um, you know, through the editing process, and they've been fantastic. I, I, think that's, I, think that's, I think that's literally the length of time Inspire Pro was on hiatus. Wow. Wow. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's... Um, um, it was awesome to come back to that show. Uh, there, there, there's no 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 war games, just two really good feud ending matches. Dylan Bostic and DJZ, of course, for the heavyweight title, and uh, Andrew Palace and Chris Larusso, all friends of the show, of course. Um, but you know, I, I thought they were the better cage matches I've seen collectively in a while. Um, they would always have a war games match at the show. It seemed, and it always. Like it seemed like most of the time it would get a little kludgy, you know what I mean, and weird. Um, of course, last uh, the poster for last year's were behind me actually with uh, Rhino, um, Rhino Heath Slater's new tag team partner. Spoiler for SmackDown and uh, and Tommy Dreamer. You know that was a pretty big deal, of course. Um, but I thought it was a great show. Uh, uh, the biggest takeaway, of course, great matches with the people I just mentioned in the cage, right? But the show stealer potentially definitely almost is uh the rematch for the super indie title they were in the finals of super indie which amen you gotta, you gotta watch that uh jonathan yeah, grisham and uh josh alexander the current champ and we've talked about them a, a bit in the past it was great i actually got to to meet me josh uh, that we we actually been corresponding to try to get him on the show a little bit here but schedules and everything um but uh they went nearly a half an hour in this match um and right before intermission and unfortunately it was when we had seven matches before intermission because you have to put the cage up so it was kind of a oh boy um but uh, <laughs> but holy crap the, I, holy crap guys um it was tremendous uh, it, 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 you know we talked about injuries and 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 and, and everything I, I you know there was a there's there was just such a, a great story being told with this. And I, I, I've said it before, maybe on the show, at least I probably said it to you. Josh Alexander is like IWC's new Ray Rowe. He's yeah. that like guy that comes out and you're like, oh, you know, whatever. This guy's not like built a really fantastic. He's just a dude in a singlet with a uh, headgear. That's kind of weird, right? You know, you think like, well, what is this guy being Scott Steiner or something? And then he goes in and, and he's badass. Um, Ray Rowe was a guy that came in wearing uh, Cleveland Browns colors in Pittsburgh and called himself the uh, the Cleveland Mafia along with J-Rock and, uh, uh, and won the crowd over in Pittsburgh. They were cheering for somebody wearing Browns colors from Cleveland. He was that badass and made that much of an impression, right? And obviously doing what he's doing now and kicking ass. Um, I think Josh Alexander is in that in that boat too and and uh, uh jonathan grisham is just fantastic as well and uh you can say he's just like the right dance partner for him you know what i mean um just tremendous also fantastic to see lufisto for the first time ever for me um just awesome had a great match with ray lynn a uh, friend of the show serafini actually came back as as part of that match um but you know, tough you know just just awesome awesome stuff from that uh, so uh, uh, things I learned. Well, first of all, we talked about a little bit of uh, sticking uh, Jimmy Vegas on our friend Tragar. It was great because there were a lot of mayhemers there, so it was, it was great to. It was kind of a reunion of sorts for a lot of things. Um, but uh, also we got to play a little bit. Uh, if you go to yeah. IndieWrestling.us's Facebook page, there's actually a 360 video of Andrew Palace and Chris Larusso coming out for the cage match. I think it's kind of fun to see uh, Chris was doing some great stuff, like you know, you know, doing the I'm going to test the cage and looking at it and kind of being intimidated by the cage and and you hear some of the fun chants going on because they start chanting Discount Miz. Um, the crowd yeah. was fantastic as usual for these things, and uh, uh, you know, going into the cage and then Andrew Powell's coming in and you know, House of Fire, uh, and we did some other recordings as well. I'm hoping to uh, work. I actually haven't looked at them yet, but I'm hoping to work on those and get those um, out here after we, we release the show. Uh, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping that a lot of people have watched it. A lot of people respond to it. And I really appreciate that. Um, so I'm hoping we can do a little bit more with this. Um, it's, it's a concept we're play, playing with in a few different ways. We did RWA's entrances last month, of course. Um, we also attached a GoPro to the top of the cage. 
Um, sadly, only lasted one match because um, I kind of misjudged the time when we put it up there, and I caught like 20 minutes of the intermission apparently instead of the and filled the card. Uh, but we got it during the Palace and Larusso match, which I think was probably the more effective of the two matches if we were going to use it. And it's actually I just edited it in as another camera. So there's plenty of falls off the cage that are from the bird's eye view, and I think it's uh, I think it's pretty cool and and uh, just look, hopefully it's something that brings a little bit of a different style to this thing. And uh, and I hope and I think uh, you know as we talked about, indies need to stand out a little bit, and I'm hoping visually we can we can do that on that end. It was a lot of fun to play with those things. So and really awesome. good really good to hang with the IWC crew when it's not somebody's wedding. Because <laughs> that happened recently. Um, I love wrestler weddings, by the way. I usually get asked to film them, and it's like I'm at a wrestling show without the violence. Usually, <laughs> usually, usually. So, but yeah, that was uh, my wrestling experience. Of course, um, this weekend I have a wedding. Actually, my brother's wedding. And uh, but right down the road, how does this work out? My brother's getting married on the, on the day of RWA's next show, and it is like five minutes from the venue oh nice what i want to see if i can just drag half of the wedding party with us to rwa i was gonna say now you have no excuses yeah yeah yeah, he's like yo yo are you married we get this we add some cake we dance a little bit let's go watch some people be let's go watch Let's go watch some sweaty men beat each other up. <laughs> you know, I'm going to use sweaty men like more often now uh, when I'm Hashtag. referring to pro wrestling. Is that, is, like, you know, it's not an well, accurate. We referred to, uh, uh, it, it may be too vulgar for the show, but we referred to uh, MMA as something on early episodes of the Mayhem show before. I think Lunchbox coined a, coined a phrase. Yes, sweaty dick punching. Yes, yes sweaty uh, dick punching. MMA. Who would have known sweaty dick punching would have been so big? Um... But anyways, um, but no, that's a lot of fun. Uh, RWA, RWAlive.com, of course, if you are in the Pittsburgh area. So I'm sure most of you are in the Pittsburgh area, Eamon. Uh, but they have a pretty fun one. Of course, some faces um, um, popped up, some ones that we're familiar with on the show. Super Hentai, Bobby Shields, Marshall Gambino. Uh, uh, Sanjay Dutt will be returning for the promotion as well. Uh, so he's been a big part of it in their cruiserweight division. Uh, definitely worthwhile. Their DVD has been great. Their crowd has been uh, uh, just a- excellent. Um, talked with the the guys debuting last month. Um, and I don't think we had a show after that to talk about it, but um, they just just that working with that crowd was just fantastic. And as I've been saying, that crowd is amazing. You can't get anything better than that in the area. Um, there's there's not. You know, there's not like the group of assholes that's going to ruin it for everybody, like in some other places. Um, it's just everybody is into it and yelling and, and on fire and, and, and lasts through most of the night. And it's great. They're there for wrestling and and, and the show has just been getting better. So check it out, rwalive.com. And of course, all these shows available over at indywrestling.us. Amen. I'm sure there's plenty of other pro wrestling going on out there in the world. Jakar's Trio is happening in a couple weeks. I will be in attendance with some uh, Mayhemers. We are establishing a Mayhem road trip for this. Haven't been there since 2009. Jeez, when did you go to that show? That was, that was what, 20? I found the video. 2010, <laughs> I want to say. 2010. The, the weekend Daniel Bryan was in Cleveland between his stints with the WWE. And that time we almost killed you in the parking lot. Yep. Yeah, that was fun. Yep. Um, uh, but no, I, it seems, that's going to be like probably the biggest weekend for indie wrestling you can think of because not only is King of Trios that weekend, but on the opposite side of the country, uh, Battle of Los Angeles is that weekend. Oh, geez. Uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be crazy. Uh, uh, I think it's also around the time where the Cruiserweight Classics – well, the Cruiserweight Classic will obviously still be happening, but like this is the the, the year of tournaments and like independent wrestlers in tournaments, and it's 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 gonna be fun. It's gonna be a fun time. Good time to be a wrestling fan, and could you imagine is even better than it was last year? I love it, love it, love it, love it, love, yeah. it, love it, love it, love it. If you are not happy with pro wrestling as a whole right now, you have no pulse. Uh, You're crazy. Yes, like so what is your problem? You should find a new hobby. Uh, but anyways. Eamon, it's been a blast. It's been a blast, Sorg. It has been a blast. 
Uh, we will be, I don't know what's going to go on for next week's episode because of some interesting scheduling things we're working out right now. Uh, we, we hope we will see you as usual. I hope you guys have noticed we have moved to Thursday releases, although it will probably be earlier actually next week now that I think about it because <laughs> there's some, again, some interesting scheduling issues. Uh, but, uh, we are going to keep this show going. We are rebuilding. We are going to make it faster, stronger, leaner. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. And we have a lot of new names on the list, on that checklist to get on the show. Some names that have been overdue to be on the show. Yes. Way overdue to be on the show. There's a lot of, oh shit, you haven't been on my show. I'm going to schedule you very soon, sir. Happening yeah. right now. So, uh, thank you. Aim and, aim and two, please. Inspire Pro yes, Wrestling. Indeed. Go support. Go watch that match. Go share that match. Go gift that, we'll match. that match. Gift that match. Are we allowed to? Yeah. Maybe. yeah. And just Lane wants a gift. Go, go, go hook her up if she hasn't got it yet. <laughs> go gift it, please. Go give it. Go give it. And uh, I'm at Sorgatron, IndieWrestling.us, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Please let us know what you think. All the places. Subscribe. Share the show. Wherever you found us. Appreciate it. We'll see you guys next time. And please support Indie Wrestling. Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.